Nine News at Nine. And good evening, everyone. It is a case that made national headlines dubbed hashtag Pointergate. And maybe you thought you'd heard just about everything on it. Well, you haven't heard this. The police detective investigating a case involving the man in that photo has been transferred after prosecutors declined to charge that case. Tom Lydon is here with the exclusive for us tonight, Tom. Guys, this is not really a story about the picture itself, whether the Minneapolis mayor and this man are flashing gang signs or whether the television station that originally aired the story did a good job or not. This is really about the aftermath of all that and how what should have been a routine investigation has now become politicized and compromised. A couple of months before that now infamous pointer gate picture, the one between Mayor Betsy Hodges and get out the vote organizer Navelle Gordon, there was a real life stick up on the corner of West Broadway and Penn Avenue. 2 a.m. August 2nd, a 59 year old man robbed at gunpoint. Navelle Gordon says he was simply nearby waiting for a bus, but was arrested along with two other adults and three juveniles. Police found the five suspects a short distance away and brought them back here to the scene where the victim positively identified them. But it was DNA on the gun, some kind of DNA, that was supposed to tie that gun to Navelle Gordon. The officer investigating the case was Sergeant Jesse Garcia, a former spokesperson for the MPD, now working in the robbery unit. The detective suspected the gun recovered from the robbery was one of the guns Gordon is pictured with on his Instagram account. Fox 9 News has learned last month the DNA on the gun came back as a positive match with Navelle Gordon. But the Hennepin County attorney declined to charge the case as felon in possession of a gun, a charge Gordon pled guilty to in a separate case two years ago. And Sergeant Garcia was suddenly transferred from the robbery unit downtown to property crimes in the third precinct. Same pay, but much lower in prestige. Two weeks ago, the police union, which fanned the flames of the original Pointergate story, filed a grievance on Sergeant Garcia's behalf, saying his transfer was retaliation. But the MPD is also investigating Sergeant Garcia for Facebook messages about the case. In one message, Sergeant Garcia allegedly calls Gordon a bad person. But whether anyone is bad or good suddenly seems beside the point. Is the MPD front office and prosecutors taking a pass in a case just too hot to handle? Is the detective carrying water for a union who can't let go of its grudge with the mayor? Like so many cases lately, it's fraught with race and politics. It's hard to know where exactly to point the finger. And the stakes for Navelle Gordon and all this are pretty high. He was given probation on his gun possession case two years ago and is potentially looking at five years in prison for the violation of probation. Minneapolis police say this is still an active investigation and won't discuss it in detail, but a spokesperson says it is not unusual for employees to be transferred to other units. By the way, guys, we should note that Navelle Gordon and Sergeant Garcia did not reply to our request for comment. Duly noted. Also, Tom, is it unusual for prosecutors in a case like this to decline to prosecute? You know, it, it actually is not. This is really interesting. I thought about one third of the cases the Hennepin County attorney gets are declined. They are sent back for further investigation in the police departments because prosecutors believe there is insufficient evidence to prove the case beyond a reasonable, reasonable doubt. I understand this case actually has gone back a couple of times now, back and forth between prosecutors say, and police. You say insufficient evidence. People out there are going to go, well, well, they have DNA, DNA in this case. <laughs> I think that's a good point, especially when you're talking about possession. I mean, DNA would seem to show possession. We don't know because they aren't discussing the details of this case. They are not showing us the, the piece of paper about why they're declining this case. But, you know, Randy, it's interesting. If you think about this getting to trial one day, if it ever does, think about what a defense attorney will argue if a judge allows it into court. They will say there's this whole controversy surrounding this case. You can envision perhaps a defense attorney say, well, maybe this evidence was planted. Mm -hmm. I mean, the chronology doesn't work out, right? Because this happened before Pointergate really developed. Sure. But you can see how this whole entire case could become so politicized in the prosecution. All right, Tom. Thank you.